Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the dangerous Vaughn Manor, where once again we are journeying through all my books in the books that time forgot. It'll be me and my partner in adventure over here, Roger, who's looking thrilled as usual to be here with the books that time forgot. And now in every one of these action-packed episodes, we'll go through two boxes, uh, and eventually we'll go through all my books. Eventually that'll happen someday. But let's dive into this box and see what treasures uh, lie here ready to be unearthed. First book in this box is A Century of Great Western Stories, an anthology of Western fiction edited by John Jakes. This is a pretty good book. This is an excellent anthology of Western fiction. So there's that. This is an excellent book. Uh, this is Joe Abercrombie's Best Served Cold. Uh, this is his fourth novel, and that's as far as I've gotten is up to his fourth novel. I'm going to read all of them uh, eventually. So far, this has been my favorite. This is an excellent book. Great story of revenge. Excellent revenge novel, this one, Best Served Cold. Uh, next, uh, we've got Cookery. In ancient, uh, Cookery and Dining in Imperial Rome, Apicius, Cookery and Dining in Imperial Rome, edited and translated by Joseph Dahmer's Verling, you know, so if you ever want to dine like the Romans, pick up this book. Of course I've got that, uh, just as I have. Battle Cry of Freedom, the Civil War Era by James McPherson. This is an excellent book on the Civil War. Yeah, great, great Civil War book. One of the best books on the Civil War that you'll read. So there's that. And to go along with that, I've got Other Modernities, Gendered Yearnings in China After Socialism. Lisa Rofel. And to go right along with that, I've got Hellboy. The Bones of Giants, a novel by Christopher Golden, uh, based off of the character created by Mike Mignola, who of course does the illustrations in the cover. I've never actually read this book. I should keep this out and read this book. I love Hellboy. He's one of my favorite characters. Ah, rereading America. Cultural Contexts for Critical Thinking and Writing. Gary Colombo, Robert Cullen, and Bonnie Lizzle. Yeah, so there's that. And to go along with that, Vericonium by M. John Harrison. Uh, this is the Fantasy Masterworks version of this book, Vericonium by M. John Harrison. It's an interesting book, really interesting fantasy, which is why it's in the Fantasy Masterworks. This is a good book. You should check that one out. Uh, this next book is not good. This is not a good book, and yet I have it anyway. This is John Norman's Outlaw of Gore, one of John Norman's crappy gore books. Uh, this is the second crappy gore book. Uh, it started off not great, the gore books, and they progressively got more crappy until they just turned into these weird, bizarre, sexual fantasies of John Norman. Uh, so if you're into that, uh, but this was before he got really deviant. This is the outlaw of Gore, which is just a Edgar Rice Burroughs type of thing with the action not written half as well as an Edgar Rice Burroughs novel. It's the outlaw of Gore by John Norman. I don't even know why I have this book, but here I've got this book. Uh, let's see. What else uh, do I have in here? I've got Pigeons from Hell. Uh, by Robert E. Howard, Pigeons from Hell. This is a collection uh, of Robert E. Howard's stories uh, from Zebra. This is an old Zebra edition of Robert E. Howard's stories. I'll put that on the teetering pile I've got going on over there. Uh, let's see. I've got a very old and beat-up copy in here of J.R. Tolkien's The Return of the King. Don't know why I have it. I don't think I have any other... Uh, copies from this particular edition. I love this edition, though. I love that old tiny cover. 
love these old 60s copies of uh, Tolkien. So I've got that. What else do I have hiding in here? I have Carl Sagan's The Dragons of Eden, Speculations on the Evolution of Human Intelligence. Carl Sagan, you can't go wrong with that guy. He was pretty smart, that fella. And this is an interesting book. And next, I've got Anno Dracula by Mr. Kim Newman. This is the first in the Anno Dracula series, which is an entertaining series of vampire novels. Anno Dracula. Well, I can't have a box without having Robert E. Howard hiding in there, and I've got an older copy of Solomon Cain, Robert E. Howard's Solomon Cain, the first complete edition, which has since been superseded in quality by the Del Rey edition. But this was the first complete edition, apparently, uh, from Bain Books, uh, with a cool cover there, Solomon Cain, one of Robert E. Howard's coolest characters. Uh, what else do I have in here? I have uh, Foundation, a 50-cent copy of Isaac Asimov's Foundation. That's hiding in this box. Along with an old copy of The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. This is uh, an old Bantam copy of uh, The Martian Chronicles. Great book, man. Great book. Of course it's great. Uh, this one isn't, though. This is Sky Pirates of Callisto, uh, which I paid a dollar for. I was overcharged. Uh, Sky Pirates of Callisto by Lynn Carter. Lynn Carter's books, they're Lynn Carter books. What do you say? Some of them are a lot of fun. Some of them are just not that great. Sky Pirates of Callisto, it was okay. This one was okay. It was before Callisto got really bad, which it did. Uh, next, we've got Ernest Hemingway's The Nick Adams Stories. All the Nick Adams stories. There's moody Nick Adams hanging out by this tree. Apparently, that's moody Nick Adams. Looking very... very nice. He looks like a very 1970s moody Nick Adams in the Nick Adams stories here by Ernest Hemingway. Another 50-cent clearance item, which I picked up. This is pretty cool. This is a word from the outer dark. Uh, this is poetry by Robert E. Howard, Robert E. Howard's poems. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool right there. Then I've got a really cool book. This is Dracula. This is the edition of Dracula that I first read Dracula in uh, when I was a little small child. This wonderful cover, this magnificent book, started m me really, really becoming an inc a huge reader. Uh, this book is responsible for all these other books that I've got, really. And look at this one. It's The Fall of the House of Usher, another <laughs> paperback that I don't need of Edgar Allan Poe because all these paperbacks have the same stories in them, uh, pretty much. Uh, this one does have... Um, this Doesn't this one have his novel in it, though, as well? Henry Pym or A. Gordon Pym? Yeah, A. Gordon Pym. Uh, that's in there. Here is an old Penguin copy of The Unvanquished by that infuriating author, William Faulkner. If, if I ever want to be frustrated, I will read this. The Unvanquished by William Faulkner. And here is an extra copy of The Two Towers. I have this very same edition elsewhere, but... Here I go. I have another edition of The Two Towers because, of course, I do. Of course, I do. Uh, let's see. Here we go. We've got John, more John Jakes. John Jakes, the bastard. He's a bastard, this guy. John Jakes. This is the first volume in the Kent Chronicles. The Kent Chronicles. The bastard. He's a bastard, this guy. Okay, these are all out of order. Are they out of order? Maybe not. Here's the second volume. This is The Rebels in the Kent Family Chronicles. The Rebels! Which was followed by The Seekers. The Seekers. Kent Family, fam the Kent Family Chronicles continues with The Seekers. There you go. Uh, let's see. Do I have number four? 
See if I can do this in order. I gotta have number four, right? I have to. Ah, here it is. Number four, The Furies. The Furies by John Jakes. The Kent Family Chronicles, volume four, The Furies. Uh, do I have number five? Here it is. The Titans. The Titans. Volume five of the Kent Family Chronicles. Which was followed, of course, by volume six. This is The Warriors. The Warriors. Volume six of the Kent Family Chronicles. Which is followed by... Nick Fury, agent of... No, it's the Lawless. It does kind of look like a Nick Fury's on this cover, but it's not Nick Fury. It's some other character. It's the Lawless. Kent Family Chronicles, Volume 7. The Lawless. And I believe this was the stunning conclusion of the Kent Family Chronicles. Volume 8. The Americans. The Americans. This is the most American of American-y books. The Kent Family Chronicles. Should I read these books again? Actually, I don't think I ever finished reading these books. I don't think I finished the series. I think I only read the first four, maybe, when I was very, very young. Um, but I've got them all uh, now in these book clubby editions. So let me know. Should I read these books again? Who's read these books? Let me know what you guys think. And I have one last book in this Box, Alexandre, Alexandre Dumas, The Red Sphinx, a sequel to The Three Musketeers. Not really. It's not really a sequel to The Three Musketeers, but it's an interesting book in its own right, uh, The Red Sphinx. It's kind of a sequel to The Three Musketeers, kind of, I guess, but it's not really. Tell me what you think. Has anybody read this, The Red Sphinx? I actually have not read it yet. I picked it up with every intention of reading it, and I should, because is this a mammoth? It's a mammoth over 800 pages. But now I feel like I have to read Three Musketeers again. That would be fun anyway. So that's box number one. I'm gonna go gra grab box number two. All right, box number two. Roger and I are ready to go with box number two. Okay, what's in here? Uh, first of all, we've got a random copy of Killo by Louis L'Amour. Random copy of Killo. From what I'm seeing, this doesn't really go, but uh, there you go. And then we've got The Mercurian by Leigh Brackett. Uh, this uh, was her uh, stories of um, John Stark, Eric John Stark. Adventure stories, sort of in the Edgar Rice Burroughs tradition. That kind of sword and planet kind of thing. But uh, Leigh Brackett, she really did it in her own way. She was a really interesting writer. And uh, these original Eric John Stark stories are pretty darn good. So if you could ever find them, read them. So that's the Mercurian. And I've got a book without a dust jacket, but it's The Nomad of Time by Michael Moorcock, the great writer who did the Elric stories, the nomad of time. And we also have the fantastic Alfred Bester book, The Demolished Man. Got this cool old book clubby copy of The Demolished Man, which I got for 69 cents, The Demolished Man. That's pretty cool. What else do we have in this particular volume, or this particular box. Uh, we've got The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury. This is a pretty cool uh, hardcover copy of The Illustrated Man. Great book. Great writer, Ray Bradbury. You know that. He's awesome. Here's the awesome man himself. So cool. Uh, this is interesting. It's The Chronicles of the Lensman by E.E. E. Doc Smith. The Chronicles of the Lensman. And this is the first volume of The Chronicles of the Lensman. Uh, it's got Book 1, Dawn. you got The World War, Book 2. And Book 3, Triplanetary. Yeah. The Chronicles of the Lensman. There you go. And, of course, 
I can't have that unless I also have the second volume of the Chronicles of the Lensman by E.E. E. Doc Smith. What's in this volume? Uh, this one has Gray Lensman, Second Stage Lensman, and Children of the Lens. This was a popular series back in the day, the Lensman series of books. So, Chronicles of the Lensman in two volumes. That's pretty cool, actually. And speaking of two volumes, it's a treasury of great science fiction, uh, which the uh, Science Fiction Book Club uh, put out many, many moons ago. I don't know if it was the Science Fiction Book Club or just the Book Club, uh, but this is a treasury of, the great, of great science fiction. I think it was the Science Fiction Book Club that did it. That would make sense. This one came in two volumes. My first volume's actually in pretty good shape, and this is just an anthology, a really good anthology, uh, of science fiction stories, uh, and it has a novel, I think, or two in here. So that's the first volume. The second volume I have is not in such great shape. This is volume two. Uh, this is volume two, right? Yeah, right? Is it? That This is volume one. That was volume two. This is volume one. Volume one's in crap shape. But I've got two volumes of the treasury of great science fiction. And speaking of big old science fiction anthologies, which seems to be what's in here, I have this. This is a, a science fiction argosy. A science fi fiction argosy by Damon Knight. This book is really, really big. It originally belonged to the Boston Public Library. Somehow, Steve Donahue didn't get this copy. Even though it was in Boston at one time, it made its way here to Stately Vaughn Manor. A lot of really good stuff in here. This actually has The Demolished Man in it, the novel I just showed. This anthology has that, has novels and stories in here. Uh, this is a really big anthology. It's a mammoth, has more than human uh, in here, the novel by Theodore Sturgeon. So this is a really, really cool old anthology. I was lucky to find that. And I've got a tattered, tattered copy of another Damon Knight book. This is science fiction of the 30s. The dust jacket has seen better days. Kind of beat up this old copy of science fiction in the 30s by Damon Knight. But it's really cool. Oh, and more Lay Bracket is, is in here. This is the best of Lay Bracket, the best of Lay Bracket, edited by Edmund Hamilton. Uh, around here somewhere, I have the best of Edmund Hamilton, which is edited by Lay Bracket. So this is pretty cool right here. The best of Lay Bracket, edited by Edmund Hamilton. And this is, I have this. I showed this the other day. I had a uh, dust jacketless copy of this, but this is the one with the dust jacket. The Book of Scathe, The Adventures of Eric John Stark. So these are the novels in the Eric John Stark series. Uh, the Mercurian were the novelettes or short stories. And these are the three novels that make up The Book of Scathe, uh, The Adventures of Eric John Stark. Look at that not particularly scary dog that Eric John Stark is facing. Um, it just looks like a big puppy to me. But oh well. It's pretty cool anyway. That was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. Uh, Books that time forgot. Because um, that, that box was pretty small. So, next time, which will probably be next week. I don't know that I'll have another one of these up this week. But probably next week at some time. I'll be going through two more boxes. So, until I see you next time, Roger and I say, have a great day.